In 1980, when my two older brothers were in college, my parents and I moved to Boston from Poughkeepsie, New York. I was 13 and delighted with the prospect of living in the city. We rented an apartment near Symphony Hall, and I could walk or take the tea anywhere I wanted to go. Heaven. Although finding the grocery store, the hardware store, the post office, and a fabulous Thai restaurant required little work, they were all within our block, finding a church was a task we had to work at. I don't remember how many churches we visited, but I do remember that the decision of where we would attend was made as a family. I remember that one church was installing a new minister of music the Sunday we attended. We watched with wide eyes as said new minister left the sanctuary during the service and returned a few minutes later with a coffee in a paper cup, which he blew on and sipped from through the rest of the service. <laughs> I remember that the conservatism of another church left us distinctly uncomfortable. Finally, I remember coming to Old South. I remember how Jim Crawford's amazing sermon and the fabulous music told us that we had found our new church home. Over time, this congregation has become our larger family. For me, Old South is my first church home, my first spiritual home. This continues to be a blessed and an amazing notion to me. In my childhood, I attended three different Boston area churches. I was baptized at one, I attended church school at a couple of them, and sang in a youth choir at a third. But I found neither a sense of spirituality nor a sense of home in those places. Now, I had people in my life who were wonderful role models, to be sure, but none who were grounded in a Christian faith. Others in my early life who did profess a Christian faith were anything but role models or ambassadors of a loving God. And so by my preteen years, I had turned away from organized Christianity. So what brought me to Old South? It was the faith, love, and gentle encouragement of Sarah's parents, Jim and Jan Monsma, who welcomed me not only to their family, but introduced me to the Old South family. To them, I will be forever grateful. At Old South, I was welcomed into a home filled with people at all stages of their faith journey. Those who had traveled long and whose faith was sure, and those who, like me, were just setting foot to path. And what a wonderful home it has been. In 1991, we were married here, our children were baptized here, and we've been blessed to share and receive the love and support of this community, our church family. But Nancy and the Stewardship Committee didn't actually ask us here to reminisce about our early days at Old South. They asked us to speak to you today because it's the time of year to consider what we will give to Old South in 2019. As members of the church, we take seriously our responsibility to give of our time, talent, and treasure to help sustain our community. Having just passed the new year, I'm sure we're not the only ones who are somewhat weary of calls for financial support from one organization or another. In the week between Christmas and New Year, I received 25 solicitation emails. 25 emails from organizations we believe in, Organizations that do good work in the Boston community and around the world. Organizations that provide food, shelter, medical care, clothing, help for prisoners and immigrants. They're all organizations that we would like to support. But 25? All that need can be overwhelming. Sometimes the Bible seems to add its own pressure. In the book of Matthew, Jesus bids us to feed the hungry, Give the thirsty a drink, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick and the prisoners. And then, of course, there's the part about giving anyone money who asks for it, giving your coat and your shirt, too. 
and giving up all material goods to follow him. How can we possibly find the money and the time to do all that? Being a Christian is no small task. It's a daunting responsibility to live up to the expectations of the child of God. Sometimes the pressure of it feels like reason enough to just climb into bed and shut out the world. But we don't, at least not most Sundays. Instead, we come to church, because when we are here with our church family, we know we are not alone in trying to meet Jesus' expectations of us. We are encouraged and strengthened to work for what we believe in. And here with our church family, we don't have to meet every expectation on our own. We take comfort in the knowledge that as a church family, we work together toward Christ's mandate. Large donations and small are combined to do great work in our city and around the world. Greeters are here every Sunday to greet strangers and members on the street and at the door and inside too. Old South members visit and deliver meals to the sick and the homeless and give away coats and clothing through the prison book program and demonstrations at the ICE detention center. We minister to prisoners. This fine building provides shelter and respite to any who need it and a staff that, to keep everything going, to teach and inspire us. And there's so much more. We do our part and so do you. Together, we can do amazing things. So although the needs of this world can be overwhelming, and as Christians, we must do what we can to live out Christ's mandate, we don't have to do it alone. Instead, we can do it together, as a family. Today, we bid you to think prayer prayerfully about what you can give of your time, talent, and treasure in 2019 and pledge that we will join with you to give and to do Christ's work on earth. We'd like to close with a prayer by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work Christmas begins, to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart.